I did a volunteer trip across the United States. Um, and I just kind of did things that made me uncomfortable because like taking a volunteer trip with a bunch of strangers across the nation was kind of uncomfortable for me. I was a very shy person. Um, and I just did a lot of things that made me uncomfortable. I took a semester off and like my peers were just, I, I thought my peers would just totally judge me for doing that. I did a lot of things for me. Um, and I think that's how I found my path because I think up until that point I had done what everybody thought I should do. And then for that semester, I did something for me and for my path. And then I actually transferred schools. I went to UW lacrosse. Then I changed my major to marketing. I absolutely loved it. And then I actually found college works internship. So, um, I think my path was a little bit rocky at the start. I just didn't know what I was doing. And I took a chance on myself and what I wanted and I found it. Welcome to the show and thank you for listening. We've got Anne Chanel on the show today, who at a very young age has already moved to general manager of one of the companies I'm partners in. Anne's going to talk about every challenge being an opportunity, a different way of looking at it. It's not a challenge. It's an opportunity to build your confidence. She's going to talk about striving to be the best you can be despite what other people think as Anne grew up in a small town and didn't have the peer group that maybe you had. So Anne had to keep striving to her own goals instead of other people's goals. She's going to talk about how you do one thing is how you do everything and that extra 5% making all the difference in her life. She's gone from being super shy to managing people and giving speeches out of her comfort zone every time she gets to. And it's not scary anymore because if you're out of your comfort zone enough times, getting out of your comfort zone becomes comfortable. Welcome to the Edge of Excellence. And thank you so much for making time to be on the show. Welcome to the Edge of Excellence. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's nice to see you again. I got to see Anne this weekend in Somerset, Wisconsin, with a few other people that we work with. I was only there for a few hours, but it was nice to spend some time with you. And thanks for helping to organize that. And thanks for inviting me out. That yeah, was a good time. Appreciate you coming out. It was great. I love seeing the bean plants blowing in the wind. I have never seen that before, but I've had a few chances to drive through Wisconsin. I strongly recommend it. I'm glad I come into one city, fly out of another city, and I get to go through and see the beautiful farms and all the greenery and the lakes. It's just a wonderful place to visit and probably even better to live. Is that right? Uh, not in the winters, but yeah, overall. <laughs> I, I did enjoy myself in the winter too, although it is cold. And I, I've seen one job out there and it's a job that I would never want to do. It's the people that fix the broken pipes in the winter. It's frozen, it's blizzarding, and a big old two foot diameter pipe breaks and they've got to dig up the uh, ground and then they're standing in a pool of freezing water fixing these giant pipes you know what i'm talking about yeah i know exactly what you're talking about yeah that, i look terrible for them that would be the worst job ever hopefully they get paid hazard pay but anyway we're going to get on with the show and i start the same way every time you're a person that's living on the edge of excellence you've done quite a few things in your young life and you've kind of always been pushing it a million clubs in school you had basically every every club you could join you were in you had three jobs while you're in high school you were a full-time factory assembly worker you worked as a nanny you worked in restaurants you worked in the kitchen you worked uh uh, as a server. So you've done a whole bunch of things uh, and you've been really, really um, proficient at everything you've done. So why don't you share with us, what is your definition of excellence? Um, I would say my definition of excellence is just striving to be the best person and, oh crap, in that case, yep. stop that. <laughs> We're going to start over? Wait, start over where? Wait, sorry, stop, wait. Okay, okay. I can hear you. And where do we start over? Like, do we just start over? I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask the same question again. Okay. Cool. All right, right. So, Anne, what is your definition of excellence? Yeah, I think for me, the definition of excellence is to just be the best you can be regardless of what everybody else is doing and just having a constant drive to do what it takes to reach your own potential. So what do you mean by regardless of what everybody else is doing? Um, I think it's it's a hard thing. I think in college and just like going through high school and stuff, you kind of look at other people um, for reference. Um, and I think you kind of have to be on your own track to reach what really, what success really means to you, um, and excellence in general. So I think just 
you know, creating goals for yourself and just not really focusing on what other people are doing. I think that's really important to reach your own potential because everybody's different. And others may not be striving enough. Others might, you might have a circle of friends that aren't that ambitious. So they might not be shooting for the stars. They might be shooting for some low target. So you're saying you have to sit down and kind of define your goals to define success for yourself and not just use your peers and those around you to measure yourself. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, unless it boosts you, like you can re- use your peers if they're on influencing you in good ways. That's great. But I think just striving for your own potential is just super important. Yeah, I met a young lady this weekend and we're talking and she came from a small town of 600 in uh, Wisconsin somewhere. And she was telling me that she had a graduating class of 13 from her high school and she's really excited to be in college. And I've never heard this before because she gets to choose her friends. And I looked at her and she said, yeah, in high school, I had to be friends with everybody. There's only 13 of us. So I didn't get to choose my friends. You just have to be friends with everybody. And then I go to college and I'm in a bigger city and I see, oh, I get to pick the people I spend time with, which I'd never really heard of before. But if you're in a small town and you may have a little bit more ambition or a little bit more skill set, it's hard if you're only comparing yourself to others. So you've got to figure out what's possible. You have to figure out what's out there. And you have to start defining and writing things down and figuring out where you see yourself despite where your friends are going. I think that's fantastic. And I haven't heard that on the show before. Regardless of what others do, figure it out for yourself. Right. And I, I'm, I did, I'm the, from the same like kind of small town situation. I'm from, I think a thousand people, I think it is now. Um, some really small town in rural Wisconsin, closest Walmart's like 35 minutes away. It's like very, very rural Wisconsin. And so I had that same thing where it's like, yeah, like you, you see these people every day and you, you want to compare yourself, but also at the same time, you don't really know what's out there and what kind of people you can meet and how many like-minded people you can actually meet once you get to college and beyond that. So Yeah. So, uh, and I believe that this person told me that her town was next to your town. So you might've grown up near each other. Glad you think, I'm glad you figured that out. I mean, uh, and I'm sure there's some wonderful people that you grew up with. There's, I I grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico, wonderful people I grew up with. um, But I'm glad that I got out there and kept, you you have a ceiling on yourself, right? You come out of, you know, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year and you have that ceiling or I want to be in management and you have that ceiling and you don't know, well, maybe you can be in ownership or maybe you could um, launch a rocket to the moon. You never know until you either kind of think outside the box, think outside your friend circle and define it for yourself. And do you find yourself redefining it constantly? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, even from, you know, freshman year of college to even sophomore year, huge jump and just redefining like what I think like success is or what I want or what kind of path I want to take. Um, I think you find a lot of that when you go throughout college, but also when you kind of encounter different challenges and go experience different things. Too. Yeah, the, the challenges seem like they're roadblocks, but they're actually ramps that launch you. You get over the challenge and you're launched the next challenge more confidently. And the first one was felt big, but you realize, oh, it wasn't that big. The next one feels big. And you, it turns out that that's not that big either. And you keep ramping yourself to more and more if you're if you're pushing. Right. And I think uh, the important thing is seeing a challenge as more of an opportunity rather than just something that's hindering you, um, like an opportunity to grow. And, you know, there's people that have really severe challenges. My wife had postpartum depression. That's a really severe challenge. Um, But out of that, she learned to deal with quite a few things. And I'm not wishing big challenges on people. It's just a fact of life. You know, I've got a couple of friends that are in the hospital right now because of COVID. I, I don't want them to go through that. But when they get through hopefully they will get something out of that challenge. And that's about, you know, that's one of the worst ones. You get something out of the challenge that helps you grow. And we're gonna get into some of the challenges that you faced um, throughout your life, but I wanna go back to high school. And, And I know you were in FBLA and you were running the school store and you were an officer in student government and you did the yearbook and you just did about everything. But why don't you tell us in your own words, what was life like and how did you see yourself, especially in that small town? We've got people listening right now that are in small towns how did you find your path um yeah I guess I saw someone or saw myself as someone who do kind of like the little things to succeed and just kind of give myself an opportunity to be just oh sorry Matt I really like I threw a blank there you gotta okay see. hold on 
Okay, so saw myself. I gotta okay, I gotta figure out my notes are kind of bad on that one. We're gonna cut all this out. I just don't want it to like lead into another question that I answered the exact same way. Don't worry, just go. Just let it flow. Yeah. All right. Well, let so me know. The question I was, uh, what how did you see yourself? How did you find your path? Okay. So I just answer now. Yeah. So you started off with you did the little things. Okay. <coughs> Hold yeah. on. I think oh. the or I think how I saw myself is I just did all the little things to get where I wanted to be. Um, for instance, like in basketball or volleyball or any different club that I was in, um, I would always be doing the little things like, you know, you'd have your practices, but um, would you actually stay after and maybe shoot more hoops or maybe work on your serving or your hitting or anything like that, or maybe go to a lift. Um, I think just going above and beyond. Um, I just saw myself as that type of person who was just going to do what it took to reach my own potential. I really never thought of anyone else in that progression in high school. Um, I just always thought like, hey, I can be better. And maybe that's rooted in like how I grew up and my family's very sports oriented um, or just like the different things that I did. I just always wanted in instinctively. I just wanted to be good at what I did. So yeah, J Jerry Rice, who played for the 49ers, uh, maybe even before you were born, was famous for being the first person on the field and the last person on the field. And he's one of the all time football greats. And he was the example for a whole generation of what you're saying. Do the little things, do the extra 5%, go and be of and go above and beyond. And it's how you do everything, right? You, you proofread your paper before you turn it in. The person next to you doesn't do that. You show up to work five minutes early. The person next to you shows up a minute late. You clean up after work. I know you were a server. I was a server. You spend a little bit more time cleaning up and the manager notices. And now you're the assistant manager. How you do one thing is how you do everything. So you all through your life have had that understanding that if I go a little bit above and beyond, if I do two, three, four percent extra um, people will notice I'll grow and I'll start to see what I'm capable of I'll, st I'll start to realize I can do better yeah and I think it's about having the understanding of yes like these extra like let's just say I'm shooting hoops like these extra um, shots will maybe not help me today but if I do it consecutively every day like I'm going to see that progress and my coaches are going to notice that progress and my family's going to notice that progress I think that's really important to remember when you're actually doing things like that is that end goal of what you're actually going to accomplish in the end. So how, so you're, you're, you're shooting hoops or you're proofreading a paper or you're wiping off a table one more time. How do you keep in mind that end result? How do you change that one activity to a focus on, you know, five years from now, this is going to make a difference. How do you have that big picture view? I think you just kind of always, I mean, for me, it's, it's a constant thing. I think just wanting to better myself every day. I think it's one internal. And then two, you, sometimes you do have to push yourself to do that because you're not always going to be super motivated and, you know, have that internal just like drive to do that. Um, but I think it just, once it becomes, you do it for the first time, it becomes a practice. You just consistently do it. Um, it just becomes easier and easier to actually have that picture in your head because you're just having that constant, you're just doing, good things constantly throughout the day. And it just kind of helps you in the end. Interesting that you say easier and easier. So you go to basketball practice and you do those sprints where you go 10 yards and back and 20 yards and back. What are those called? And 30 yards and back. Oh, uh, like first, uh, or suicides. I think some suicides. That's what they're called. Bad word. We should probably change the name of that exercise. We'll call them. And cause I don't want to use that word. We, right. We will call them basketball wind sprints and everybody knows what we're talking about. You okay. show up the first day of practice and you feel like you're going to throw up, right? right? But three weeks in, it's not that big of a deal and you're laughing at yourself. Um, same with math class. You show up and you're totally confused and then you go study for the final and like, why was I so confused? It gets easier and easier. So you found yourself pushing, pushing yourself and, and you got used to that first time. You got used to, oh, this is really hard. And then your mind tells you, I've been here before. It's not going to be hard this time. I've been here before. It was hard before. I'll get through it. And so now you just have that mindset of this is the program. It's hard. And then it's not hard. I'm not confident. And then I'm confident. Right. Yeah. And I had a coach in high school actually tell me, so I was like, 
like serving weird or something like that. And I had to tell me in high school, like, you need 83 days to create a habit. And that really stuck with me because that kind of gave me like an end goal of like, I'm going to make this a normal thing for myself if I just kind of keep doing it and have that repetition. It's just going to become easier. It's just going to be part of my normal daily life, like brushing your teeth, for instance. Like it's just being part of your normal daily life. You consistently do the same thing. 83 days to make a habit. So you've created a habit of excellence. You do things that are hard. You patiently add 5% to everything that you do. And 83 days later, whatever that really difficult thing is now a habit of excellence. Is that right? Right. I mean, who knows if that's true, but it really, really helped me to kind of have that mentality um, of just like, hey, like if I do this enough, like it's just going to be formed into a habit. Well, I've seen quite a few speakers in my life and read quite a few books on success. And I don't really know if I should tell you this, but every other time I've heard that reference, it's been 21 days. So you might be going three, three or four times as long as you need to to build that habit. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, you're in high school. You're kicking butt. You're working your butt off. You're getting great grades. Um, and did you kind of know your life path in high school or did you figure that out in college? How, how did you find your path? Um, I think that's a really good question. Um, I think having as many as siblings I do, it gave me kind of a good guideline or like reference of like kind of what I wanted to do. But I always remember being sort of kind of like a black sheep. Um, I had a lot of pre pre pressure to succeed. Um, and just a lot of expectations um, just to do well in the things that I did. Um, so I was one of those people that I thought I had it figured out in high school and everybody else around me thought they had it figured out. Um, and then I got to college and I'm like, hey, OK, so I'm majoring in bio and chemistry and I want to go pre-med. And honestly, like my whole world got flipped around when I realized I actually didn't love the things that I thought I actually did. Um and um, I ended up kind of flip flopping. I found my path actually by taking a semester off. I moved to Arizona. I did a volunteer trip across the United States. Um, and I just kind of did things that made me uncomfortable because like taking a volunteer trip with a bunch of strangers across the nation was kind of uncomfortable for me. I was a very shy person. Um, and I just did a lot of things that made me uncomfortable. I took a semester off and like my peers were just I, I thought my peers would just totally judge me for doing that. I did a lot of things for me. Um, and I think that's how I found my path because I think up until that point, I had done what everybody thought I should do. And then for that semester, I did something for me and for my path. And then I actually transferred schools. I went to UW Lacrosse then. I changed my major to marketing. I absolutely loved it. And then I actually found College Works Internship. So um, I think my path was a little bit rocky at the start. I just didn't know what I was doing. And I took a chance on myself and what I wanted. And I found it. So. And I think, that you know, people in high school, they don't know what's out there. They don't know what jobs are out there. They don't know what careers are out there. So I believe that people are trying to be helpful and they're saying, hey, you should do this and you should be a doctor or hey, Matt, you should be a lawyer. And it's because they kind of know you and because they know that you're on the top of your game and because they know you're going to be prestigious in your career. So they suggest for you what they pick for you. And I wanted to be a doctor as well. And then I don't do well with blood. So I had to give up that career. So you decided that you wanted to do something for yourself. And, and people need to make that decision. They need to decide, okay, I've got to figure it out for myself. And maybe you test the theories that people have, have given you and you go watch a surgery and you, you don't pass out at blood or you love the biology classes and you keep going that path. But you wanted to take a pause and what was the volunteer trip? Um, so it was called Future Leaders, or no, Leaders Today, oh, Leaders Forever, something like that. Um, and basically what we, I did is I actually went through my college that I just like, you know, took a semester off from. And we went and there's a bunch of strangers. We went across the nation. We did like cleanup in Colorado, um, like in like Pikes Peak and Colorado Springs. Um, we went to New Mexico, we went to Kansas, which I don't really recommend just it's so windy there. Um, but yeah, we did a lot of volunteer stuff and it was kind of eye opening. I think it just like opened up my heart also. Um, and just like opened up my mind to just meeting different people and experiencing different things. And is that when you stop being shy? Um, no, I think internally I will always be shy. Um, however, I think, you know, little things here and there help me kind of combat that um, just like the skill sets that I can get and 
you know, I've gained throughout the years, but I will always be a shy person. Um, but the little things do help me kind of combat that like inner introvert, I would say. Well, I found out, and I, I never knew this, and there was uh, some presenter that I had that suggested that 80% of entrepreneurs are actually introverts. And we're sitting in a room like, I don't think so, guy. And then he explained the true definition of introvert, and we started thinking about it. And there's a lot of people that are introverts that are extroverts in their role, or they are shy, but they need to not seem shy in their role. So I've never thought of you as a shy person. You always seem out there. You always seem confident, but internally you're a little shy, like somebody else listening to the call right now. Externally, you've been able to get out there and have the conversations. You've been able to get out there and be a leader. You've been able to get out there and pull in you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of revenue while you're in college. Um, you know, million dollar district manager, uh, second year, and all the revenue that you brought in working with all these different customers. So how do you face that shyness and appear to be so outgoing and appear to get, be such a vocal, um, extroverted leader? That's a good question. Um, I would say, oh, the biggest thing for me is just having that extra like mentality or having that mentality of like the first time you do something, it's going to be scary and you're going to be shy. You might not know exactly what you're doing, but you're going to get through it. I think that anything I start for the first time is kind of where I get that, you know, overwhelming shyness, or maybe I'm in a social group and I, you know, I wait for my turn to talk and I overthink about what I'm going to say. I think just having, I think just like exposing yourself to different situations where you have the opportunity to grow in your confidence so I think confidence is really the root of it. Um, I think I really, truly grew in my confidence, um, aside from maybe starting something for the first time, because that's just always scary. I think anybody could agree that you just kind of get anxious or maybe shy when you start a new job or something new. Um, I think just really, really letting yourself resonate with your own self-confidence is just so important. And, and it has to start somewhere. So you were shy and not confident. And then you did the first thing for the first time and it was really hard and you got through and then you were shy and just a little bit confident and then you did the second thing and then you were shy and a little bit less, uh, a little bit more confident and you did the third and fourth and fifth and sixth thing. So over time, you developed a system, so to speak, or you developed a routine or a habit of a, a, an understanding that mm -hmm. it's always scary, I'm a little bit shy, but I've been through it before, so I'm going to do this and I'll get through it. And that mindset of I will get through it is that confidence. So the confidence is what's created your success. And the confidence came by trying when you weren't confident. Right. And it's so easy to give up when you're just uncomfortable. It's the easiest thing in the world. And I think just knowing that it's going to be okay that after that you get past that uncomfortable feeling, um, after you get more reps in, after you do it for a certain amount of time, I think just like having that, that realization really just helped me just know that if I'm uncomfortable now, I'm probably going to grow from it later. Um, if it just continues, maybe it's not something I'll do, but how I, like I used to have, have to give it time. Um, you have to give yourself a chance at least. I love that. So if I'm uncomfortable now, I will pop probably grow from it. If I'm uncomfortable and I hate it a year from now, probably should give it up, but I need to give myself a chance. Right. And I've heard that before. I've heard people talk about giving it a chance. I've heard people talk about, hey, my number's a year. I always tell people you know, when they're getting out of college and they're really worried about what they want to do for a living and they got to figure their whole life out. You don't have to figure your whole life out. You have to figure out the next year. And if that doesn't work, you go find something else. If it does work, then you found that path and you keep going. So you found your path in college. Um, and, and your major was, uh, uh, you said bio medical. Um, so yeah, so I was double majoring in bio and chemistry, um, on a pre-med track. And then I transferred, or I took that semester off transferred and then changed my major to marketing. Um, then I stumbled upon the internship, which kind of changed my life, but. <laughs> okay. So not everybody that listens to this gets to do the college works internship. And this program is about spreading the ideas to the rest of the world. But why don't you tell us how you found yourself at college works? Cause I'm interested especially um, since you're not shy at all anymore in my mind. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, um, you know, the internship is great. Um, and like everything, I, I loved it. Um, but I think the biggest thing is when I went into the internship, I just thought, you know, 
I, I knew I was good. Like just like overall, like I could probably manage it. Um, but I always just thought everyone was better than me. Um, just for whatever reason, I'm like, oh, they probably have more business experience. Like they probably, um, are smarter than me at this. Um, and it's not even about the internship. I think in whatever role you go into, you're always going to like, not everybody, but I always just thought, you know, they're better at this than me or like, like, I'm not going to be as good, but I'm going to work my butt off, um, to at least like get where I need to be and kind of prove it to myself that I can do this. Um, and like I said before, it's just meeting the potential for you. I think that's important of keeping the focus on you and not looking so much on other people. Um, I think that's super important, whatever role you go into and whatever job or internship that you take, um, college works helped me a hundred percent, but I think it's just the, the exposure to different things is what really helped me. You know, I had the same experience. I sat around the room, I watched the training and it was this huge square. I, I don't know how many people there was. It felt like a hundred people in this giant square. And I remember looking around the room and I said this in my mind, better than me, better than me, better than me. Think I can smoke that person. Think I can kick that person's butt. Maybe that person will be right there with me. And I gauged everybody and put myself right in the middle. And I, I think that was life changing for me as well, because I was the best that year. You were the best that year. So your confidence grew. You come in thinking everyone's better and you leave with a little feather in your cap that, oh, I was wrong. Not that you're the best in the world, but oh, maybe I could be. I was wrong. Maybe not everybody's better than me. Mm -hmm. And then your confidence goes up and you can try more things and then your confidence goes up. So it's kind of a snowball that occurs, right? When you start to beat people out in different areas and not, not, I'm not trying to say, go kick everybody's butt, but I'm saying, try things and show yourself what your potential is. Give the extra, I know you gave an extra five or an extra 10% and then you beat everybody out. And then the next time you're sitting in a room like that, you have a different outlook on everybody there. Right. And just knowing your strengths and weaknesses too, because I knew that one of my strong suits is like, I could work, like I could really work and I had a really good work ethic and, um, I was just very dedicated to what I did. And just knowing your strengths and weaknesses, um, is really important because you can excel in those different areas. Um, like work ethic was mine. Um, another person might've been better at sales, but they were probably not going to beat my work ethic. So I just knew like my strengths and that really helped me kind of pursue um, success throughout the internship and just so, in life. So you need to know your strengths now so you can discover your strengths later. You need to face things that are difficult now so that they're going to be easy later. And as you build these, these are the building blocks, right? These are the building blocks of success. Add a little confidence, find a new strength, find something to work on, add some more confidence, find a new strength, find something to work on. And next thing you know, you have this this foundation of success that you've built through your experiences. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, you, you go to college, you find the college works thing. You end up being uh, nominated for national manager of the year. And you move into the district manager role where you did really well. And then you do the district manager role again. And you, you know, in the top 10 of all time and the 28 years we've been doing this. So how's your confidence doing now? Yeah. So, um, now that I'm a general manager, um, I think that my confidence has just grown in just relating to people and understanding different people and, um, understanding myself too, because as I've gone, to, you know, just moving throughout the different positions, you do gain a lot of self-confidence, but you also gain a lot of other things. Um, I just think that just my role in the ability to help others figure out what they need and coach them. Um, that's really helped me just be more confident. Just yeah, sorry, Matt. Clap, clap. I was rambling. I can't do that. I, what was the question? Was... Um, the question was, uh, you went through the manager, the DM, the GM role, your confidence grew. Um, and then, uh, where do you sit now that you've done this for a few years? Oh, okay. Can we do this again? Okay. Um, so I think right now, um, being a general manager, um, I think I've just experienced a lot of growth. Um, I think I've dealt with a lot of different challenges and, you know, things in my personal life. I just have learned to deal with a lot of different things that I think a lot of peers my age don't really get. Um, and I think just 
right now where I sit is I always think that there's more opportunity to grow. No matter where I'm going to be at in life, there's always going to be more opportunity to grow for me. Um, it's just be a constant, you know, pursuing what I can or actually discover what I can actually do. Um, so it won't be just like this role. Um, I'm just going to be continuing. Oh my gosh, Matt, I'm so sorry. Keep my going. Pause. Just keep going. Hold on. Go. And then, oh my gosh, Matt, wait, stop, stop. Here, stop. Okay. Where, where will this take it? Like, can they edit the... Yeah, they're going to edit all of it out and put it all together nicely. I just, oh, whoever's going to edit this me, I have a hard time. Okay, um, so um, I think the important thing, oh wait, clap, clap. Okay. I think the important thing is remembering that wherever you are in any role, um, and for me specifically, I'm not just going to stop at general manager. Um, whatever I'm going to do in my life, gonna, there's always going to be that opportunity to grow. So you, so you're sitting in, let's say Arizona. We don't have college works in Arizona, and um, you want to end up like Anne. You want to, you know, maybe make a ton of money while you're in college. Maybe you want to really impact people's lives. And I've met people whose lives have been impacted by Anne. They say lots of nice things about you, Anne. Um, but you're looking for something. So the advice might be find the hardest thing, find the thing you're you're the most scared of and try that because that's basically what you did and then when you're done with that find the next hardest thing the next thing you're most scared of whatever you don't think you're ready for and try that and i'm not saying go jump into a deep end of a pool and you don't know how to swim you need to have either the floaties or a trainer there or someone with a pole to reach in and save you but you can find challenges where there's a lifeline and there's support to really push you out of your comfort zone, but you've just been getting out of your comfort zone every year of your life. And the, and the lesson is now it's not so scary anymore. Even getting out of your comfort zone isn't scary. Even trying something new isn't scary because you've done it so many times, you know, it'll probably work out. hundred percent. Yeah. Ne never would I have seen myself talking to um, or making a speech in front of 200 interns um, at the start or when I first started the internship, I would never would have thought I would have ever done that. Um, and I did, and I did it confidently. So yeah, always opportunity to grow. Um, yeah, obviously you don't throw yourself in like the deep end of the pool if you can't swim, but you take your skills and you just keep on growing and growing and growing. And in the end, you'll be able to accomplish things you never thought possible. So if we go back to that uh, young lady in that town of 600 or a thousand people, how uh, has where you are now surprised you and what's different than what you expected? Um, where I have, am now, it surprises me because I think at the start or like when I was still figuring things out, um, I never would have thought I would, you know, be confident to run a team or you know, be able to delegate tasks to other people, be in a management position. Um, I think that's the most surprising thing to me is just like, if I look back on to who I was and like, if I could look up to like the future me now, um, that would be probably the most surprising thing is just like having that growth and just like seeing what I'm able to accomplish. Um, because I think just self-doubt is such a huge thing um, for me specifically. Um, and it's just surprised me how far I can come. So. The surprising part is you've crushed your self-doubt. I mean, I know you're a great delegator. I know you're a great manager, but really it's, you don't have the self-doubt that you used to have now that you've had all these experiences. Is that right? Right. And that goes along with the confidence thing. It's just like little by little, you do things here and there that just like help gain that. And, and I'm sure that Jerry Rice, when he first played football, didn't, know for sure he could catch a ball under pressure he didn't know for sure he could block a tackle and then by the end of his career he doesn't expect anybody to ever tackle him and he doesn't expect to ever drop a ball because the self the self-doubt disappears and becomes complete confidence after you've done something enough times you just know you will always do well in it so you you are learning now that you will always be great at managing a team of people, about figuring out what makes them tick, about finding their motivation, about inspiring them, about teaching them. You'll always be good at that. Whereas before, maybe you thought I would never be good at that. What, what a gift, right? Yeah. And the willingness to learn is really important too, because if I don't know it, I still have, I'll still be willing to learn um, and try to catch on, you know?
and positive attitude. A lot of times people, they face a roadblock. It's really, really tough. And they start looking, they, they become victims, especially in this day and age, because we see it all over the TV. Everyone's a victim. You're never a victim. You always look for what could I have done differently? You keep yourself in the driver's seat and those challenges become opportunities in your mind. 100%. So constantly striving to be the best that you can be. So the challenges turn into opportunities. Well, I got one more question for you. It's my favorite question. Okay. Um, what sacrifices have you made that you never will regret and that you would encourage yourself to take again? Um, I think a lot of people will probably say this, um, but you know, my college experience wasn't, I would say the most typical college experience. However, like, you know, you see in the movies, like everybody goes off and to the parties and everything like that. And, um, they, you know, college is about having a good time, like in the movies and how we're kind of preached to. Um, but I think like the biggest sacrifice I really did make is just knowing what things or I guess giving up those things sometimes maybe on the weekend where I had to make money to pay tuition, or, um, maybe I had to do, um, a few estimates for the internship that I was in. Um, I think just giving those things up and knowing what you're going to benefit from them. Um, that's a sacrifice to give those up, but I think just knowing like what you're going to get out of it is important too. So, so you gave up the party for the potential, right? And you have fun. I, I wouldn't have expected myself at my age to ple be playing beer darts by a river in Wisconsin, nor would I expect somebody to take a picture of me doing that. But I, I didn't do that at college. I was working. I mean, I had a lot of fun at college. I was out every Friday and Saturday night for all four years, but I had to skip some too. And then I got to fly to Wisconsin and hang out with a bunch of people and have a great time. I gave up a party in yesteryear for a party in this year to find my potential. You gave up a few extra nights out. You had a lot of fun to find your potential. Right. And that doesn't, that's not to say that you can't have fun and you can't go to those parties, but I think just knowing when um, you can and when you can't um, is really important in prioritizing too. Yeah. You don't need to go to the party at two in the afternoon that starts at seven. You could possibly be go do a job. You could maybe do some studying, but giving up the excessive partying for your potential. Mm -hmm and facing those challenges for your opportunity. Well, and I really appreciate you coming on the show today. Very insightful. Um, always appreciate seeing you, even if it's only on Zoom. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you for making time for the Edge of Excellence. Yeah, thank you, Matt. I appreciate it.